Okay, hey guys, welcome to our episode two. Kurtley and KK are in the house. I haven't spoken to you for a few days, Kurtley. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. We have, the sun is now out in England. You know, we can smell the flowers and the roses and it's all sunny and nice, as you can see in my background. Oh, that's so, yeah. great. That's great. It's nice really, and really good. Here. It's nice and warm here in Antigua and I'm loving it. I know. And it's always warm there, I believe. But over here, we have to like make the most of our, our weather, our lovely British weather. Well, you're going to be okay. You're accustomed to that by now. I'm accustomed to that for sure. So it's been a very interesting week this week, hasn't it? PSL has started and the IPL auction. And uh, a lot of your wonderful bowlers were picked up at very, very high prices at the auction. So tell me your thoughts on this, please. Oh, uh, very interesting. I yeah. was quite happy to see quite a few fast bowlers, you know, are picked up and are going to be paid well. You know, I'm a little yep. partial to the fast bowlers, right? Yep. Yep, absolutely. We do have Riley Meredith and Jai Richardson. And... Uh, you know, so obviously this happened for a reason. So were you surprised? Are you happy? Or do you think now it can be even? Well, I think that normally you're going to have some players who are going to be more highly paid than others because mm -hmm. it comes with your worth. Not saying you know, there's a price on anyone, but, you know, that's the reality. Some guys are going to yep. be paid more than others. Yep, absolutely. And... Uh, I was just trying to think, you know, do you think, imagine if you were being auctioned right, right now, could you imagine your fees? Well, uh, if the IPA was around during my playing days, I think I'd be one of those guys in the top bracket. Don't want to sound like I'm bragging or boasting, but for what I've done, I believe I'd be up in the top bracket. I agree with you. I think there would be a bidding war. <laughs> to, 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 to sign me up? Absolutely, design you <laughs> up. Yeah, right. of course. Um, what unique qualities do you think these, these fast bowlers possess, the ones that have been selected right now? A apart from being match winners, mm -hmm. you know, when you have extreme pace, it's so important because most batsmen will be a little more cautious against you because of your pace and, and, and the quality that you bring to the team and your skill set as well. Yeah, so yeah. those are the qualities that guys look for in, in, in top class fast bowlers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I just think um, talking about um, the IPL auction, auction, as we discussed, PSL has started. How do you think the conditions are for the players right now with coronavirus, with the COVID tests that are taking place? It's much difficult, right? Without, you know, even spectators to come and watch and even cheer for you. Certainly a difficult period because every athlete in this in yep. this instance, we're talking about yep. cricket, every cricketer yep. likes to see a full stadium. You know, it yep. tends to bring the best out of them. And with this COVID-19 and the bubble and all that, it's very, very tough. I can tell you that. And you got to go through this COVID test almost every week. And yep. you, you can't go anywhere. I mean, it's really tough for the players. It's not an easy thing to do. No, it isn't. And God willing, I think hopefully now, the next six, seven months, we can all resume. Because I think the one thing that keeps everyone together, for example, in England, is football. People just love watching the Premier League. They love watching the Champions League. And I think it's something that unites people, right? And uh, the fact that you can't go to watch a live game and you can't go to the bar or the pub, I think it, there is a big difference. So God willing, it will change. Well, we're, we're hoping because I've always said that sports and music unites yeah. the world. Yeah. No politician can do that, but sports and music can. And um, mm -hmm. I'm doing some, some, some cricket commentary as we speak for the regional Super 50. And yeah. because of that, every week I have to get the COVID test. All the cricketers, the support staff, commentators, every week. So it's, it's, it's difficult, but it has to yeah. be done for the protection of everyone. 
Absolutely. And as long as we're safe, that's all that matters. That no, brings me down place. to you. You've played against some of the best cricketers in the world. So I have a list over here because I've been doing some of my research and I'm going to ask you um if you if, if you first of all how it was how your experience was and uh tell us about these players and uh as we know Sachin Tendulkar I'm going to start with him Sachin Tendulkar I've played against him on a number of occasions I've got the highest respect for him as a cricketer yeah. he's one of those guys that you have to get out you have to dismiss him he doesn't give you a chance not even an inch. He, he was so compact and never seemed to be ruffled. You know, yeah. some players you play against, you can look in their faces or in their eyes and you can tell that they're not so comfortable. And only yeah. a matter of time before you get them out. With Sachin, it's nothing like that. Hardly ever show emotions. You, you never showed any signs of weakness. So yeah. he's one of those guys that you have to dismiss. He will never give you a chance. Wow. Wow, absolutely. I mean, I've had a chance to work with, I mean, I've had a chance to interview him and it was definitely, you know, I think you meet certain people and you become gobsmacked. I mean, I'm like, I should be confident about this, but he's definitely got something about him, even now till this day. He walks in and, and he definitely has that presence. And one of the things I like about him and I've always admired is his humility. Yeah. I mean, this man has achieved just about everything in cricket. And he remains so humble and down to earth, as we say. And that's one of the qualities I admire most about him, apart from his cricketing skills and knowledge. His humility yeah. and his down to earth attitude about everything. Absolutely. Next, I have Sir Viv Richards. Ah, oh, Sir Viv. Oh, I can tell you, man. <laughs> For me, it was an honor and a privilege to play the long side of Viv. You know, I grew up hearing about Sir Viv, seeing him play, and never thought I'd be in the same change in room as him, right? But I tell you something about Viv. He was a strong leader, and never short of letting you know when you're not pulling your weight. Believe oh, me. he make it. <laughs> yeah, he makes okay. you know straight up with a few choice words, I might add. You know, but he was a wonderful cricketer, a fantastic cricketer. And I, I'll tell you something, Karishma, and of course to our many viewers. Many times you see Viv talking, well, I use I use me as an example. There are many times you see maybe hugging me, well, around the waist, you can't get to my shoulders, you know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe offering a few encouraging words. Yeah. But trust me, it's not always encouraging words. Oh, right? okay. <laughs> Some of the things they say to you can't be repeated live. Oh, so <laughs> I'll take but your word for it. He was a great was a great man. Oh my god, I'm sure we're all gonna be wondering what did he say? Now that's gonna yeah, be on my some mind. People, some people may, may be thinking, oh, you know, so we've given carefully I'm with some encouraging words. Yes, most of the times they are encouraging words. But there are a few times when they're not, believe me. Okay, okay. I do believe you. Then we have Brian Lara. Ah, oh, Brian Lara. Um, another fantastic cricketer. I mean, he, if I'm going to select a West Indies all-time greatest team, when it comes to the bat inside of it, the two names I've put down first will be Sophie Richards and Brian Lara. And then we can discuss the rest. Two phenomenal yeah. cricketer, exceptionally talented, and have done yeoman service for the West Indies team over the years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I just enjoy playing along those guys. And Brian Lowe is one of those guys that, to me, can score runs if he wants to. Yeah. So it was, I mean, we used to be roommates as well. So I know him very well. Yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. But I think that's a good... That, I mean, isn't that amazing that not only were they, are they good people, they're great players as well, but like, you know, uh, like you were saying, humble, kind, nice. I think the, these are the things that make you a good all-rounder, to be honest. Of course. But I have a question for you now. 
Who are Kellen. somebody the, the, the top players, cricketers that you've worked with or interviewed or that kind of stuff? Apart from uh, Sachin, of course. Uh, Sachin, I would say Virat. Oh, Virat Kohli. Um, yeah, Virat Kohli. I w Virat, um, then uh, MS Tony, Kevin Peterson. Right. I think I've been pretty lucky, yeah. I think because of the IPL, you get to meet everyone and uh, they're not just playing for England or South Africa or West Indies. They're all together. So it's quite right. nice to see how they play together as to opposite to each other. Yeah. That means yeah. you've you really been around some top-class cricketers. Yeah. yeah. What was it like? It's... What was it like interviewing them? Was it I difficult? I think initially when I did my first IPL, it definitely was difficult because I think you have, when you're doing something for the first time, you, you're more about asking the correct questions and what's my producer going to think and, you know, talking about the batting lineup and, but I think eventually we're all human beings. And I think if you just talk normally, like, how do you feel today? And how's your day been? And what are you talking about in the changing room? And I think... Everyone's just real, right? We all have our good days. We all have our bad days. And I think it's the realness that eventually when I just loosened up, I realized mm -hmm. that they're just, they're human, isn't it? So I think well, that's the aspect. Of course, of course we are. Yeah. We are, we are humans. I mean, yeah. I mean, of course, we, got, we have gotten all the adulation and everything and this stars yeah. take off, but we're, we're definitely humans, yes. Yeah, I think I think that's what it is. So I think, you know, when you interview someone, or I've told so many of my friends that you and I are doing a show together, and my brother, like, who's next door, he was like, "Oh my god!" And I was like, "Yeah, but he's." <laughs> and I think once you break the ice, because yes. look, respect is respect. You respect someone, you love what they do. They've done so much for your country or their country. So, but I think, I think, I think everything shouldn't be not not taken seriously. I think it should just always be a bit. Fun. Of course. I mean, that's one of the yeah. things I've always said, you know, that any interviews I'm doing, even though yeah. it may be a serious topic, I always find time to inject a little humor into it. Yeah. It yeah. It so much nicer. Yeah, it does. Going back to your list, Shane Vaughan is the next person on the list. Greatest leg spinner I've ever seen. And uh, and I've seen quite a few. And this is no yeah. disrespect to the others. Because there's some great leg spinners out there. But for me, I think Shane was the greatest. I have had the privilege of playing with him a few years ago. We played a couple of games together. Yeah. And he never knew I had a sense of humor. Because, I mean, on the cricket field, I'm always so serious, you know? Yeah. And I remember him saying to me, man, you know, I can't believe you got a sense of humor. You spent all these years, never smile, look at the kill the Australians, you know, that kind of thing. And I can't believe you're so different. So of course, Warney, I got my game face, you know, which <laughs> I put on every time I take to the field. And then my jovial and more relaxed fun side is now. So he couldn't believe it. You know, so he, yeah. he got a chance to see a different side of me. And we totally enjoyed each other's, each other's company. Yeah, but that's what we were discussing, how you envision someone in your head. And then when you meet them, it's two different things sometimes, isn't it? Certainly, uh, there, there, there are some commentators I've worked with as, as well over the years who told me they were so scared to approach me because I'm always so serious looking. They want an interview and they're like, I don't know, what is, what, what, is he going to do it? But now they get to know me, they realize, man, they missed some opportunity over the years. You know, God. I'm just different. I'm it's different. True. That's true. We have uh, Javed Meandad. Oh, great, great Pakistani. He is one of those guys who used to frustrate me. Why? <laughs> he He's not a flashy, elegant-looking player like some of the guys I've played against. Yeah. And when you look on his scoreboard, he's 50 or 60. Are you wondering, where did those ones came from? You know, maybe two fours in the midst. He just keep nibbling you, nibbling you, and he used to frustrate me, man. But wonderful yeah. cricketer, Javi Mianda. Absolutely. Alan Border. Oh, another great man. And I can tell you, Alan Border has served Australian cricket for many years. I think he was responsible for reviving okay. Australian cricket. 
you know, after the great guys left the scene, the Chappells and the Lilies and the Thompsons and these guys left the scene, he was thrusted with a captaincy with yeah. a young Australian team. Guys yeah. like Steve Waugh and Dean Jones and these guys. And I think that he really transformed Australia cricket to where it is today. They won the World Cup in 1987, a young Australian team. No one expected them to do that. So after he left the scene, you got, you got guys like Mark Taylor, Steve Waugh, Ricky Ponting, these guys who captain Australia. But for me, yeah. they were great captains. But I think Alan Border should be given a lot of credit to mold these guys into world beaters. But what was um, what was he like to bowl at? Oh, well, I can tell you something. Um, for me, I always enjoy the challenge playing against yeah. the top players in the world. Because yeah. I believe if I can dismiss them cheaply or often enough, yeah. it means I would have done something special. And I give mm. you a story about Alan Border. My first tour to Australia back in 1988-89. Yeah. The third test match at the MCG, which is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. He walked out to bat in his 100th test match. And he got like what? 80, 90 Australians standing ovation. The great man, 100 yeah. test match. They expect something special. And I was the bowler at the time. And I said to myself, I was a young man then. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm going to make it extremely difficult for the great man. So, yeah. I'm like three bouncers yeah. on a trot, right? And then that was the end of the over. And the next over, yeah. I was going to him. I bought another bounce, I think. And as I followed through, he said to me, when am I going to get a half volley? <laughs> you know? And I didn't say anything. And a couple of days later, I bought him a Yorker and bowled him for a duck. Wow. In his 100 test match. And as I followed through, I said to him, that was the half volley, but you missed it. You know, to start, sort of get back at him. So he made a duck on his 100 test match against us in Australia. And the crowd weren't happy. They took me to pieces. Who cut left with TV? He's dismissing a great man for a duck in his 100 test match. And you know, all that kind of thing. But it's yeah. all about trying to win. Absolutely. That's a brilliant story. I love stories like this. I really, really do. How do you feel when you're obviously you're you're not in your territory and you're in someone else's territory and the fans are booing you, rightly so? How how do you just do you just get on with it with your game face, your poker face? Yeah, well, of course. Um, places like Australia, you know, is a long way from Antigua or the West Indies. Yeah. So we never had too many supporters traveling to Australia to support us, unlike yeah. England, unlike England, you know. But um, so when they go to Australia. You're basically on your own against all of Australia. So that is why it gives me much more pleasure in beating Australia in Australia. Because yeah. we, don't have, we never had many supporters, you know. So yeah. it's always more satisfying to beat Australia in Australia. And I have to say that I've beaten them a lot more than they've beaten me in Australia oh. as well. You know, that's great. Absolutely. Okay, last but not least is Aman Alhook. I want you to tell me about him. About who? Izaman. Oh, Izaman Al Haq. Yeah, another yeah. Great, another great player. As a matter of fact, I remember when he came on the scene first. Imran Khan, the great Imran Khan, you know, who is not a prime minister of Pakistan. He yeah. was comparing, he was comparing Izaman Al Haq with Sir Big Richards, and he was comparing wow. them think, at this particular point in Sir Big Richards' career. And the same yeah. point with Izaman, he was he probably had them just about on par, which is which is a huge statement really. But he was a wonderful yeah. cricketer, yeah. done extremely well. Um, one of those guys that will take you on as a fast bowler, was never scared, yeah. and always believed that he could get the better of you. And I always yeah. like that because I thrive on challenges, and Izaman yeah. one of those guys will challenge you. Wow. My God, all of these stories, I can't wait to catch up on them on a regular basis. Sorry, that's Duke in the background, who's yeah, not past Duke, Duke is a star now, on TV. Duke is a, Duke <laughs> is a star. Okay, so before we end our episode, we have a treat for our viewers. You're going to play a couple of tunes. 
I'm gonna even if I know them, which I probably will, I'm not gonna say anything. We're gonna let our wonderful viewers guess them. Yes, sure. I think this is add a nice bit of juice to 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 okay. that. Here's my bass wow. guitar. Oh wow! Yeah. Yes. It's it's Can a five you? string bass guitar. Out of course, you see yep. I got my Antigua national flag here. I, well, I can see that loud yeah, and clear. I'm proud Antiguan and Barbudan, so I fly the flag everywhere I go, even on my bass guitar. So here's my <laughs> Why bass not? guitar. And I'm going to play three short intros okay. from three different songs. Okay. And I want our many viewers to identify yep. which songs they're from. And you have to name them in order. One, two, and three. Okay. So I'll have turned my music on. Yay. And intro, intro, song number one. Because okay. we want to make sure our audience name them in order. So this okay. is the first one. Song number one. Number one, you, you see how I, you see how I'm keeping a poker face on. I'm yes. getting there as well. Don't, like I'm. Don't get the secret out. Don't tell them. So that's two number one. You gotta guess that one. Yeah. Number two. Easy, simple songs, you know. That's number oh two. Oh my god, I was gonna say curly, that was so hard. <laughs> like, yeah, well, we're gonna so make complicated. it. Yeah, oh, we, I, I'm pretty sure even Duke knows that one, and yeah, he was only born well, a couple of months it, ago. We want to make it, we don't want to make it too, too, too tough. Complicated, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, that's true. All right, well, number three, the final one. Okay. Can you name those songs? I can, but I'm not allowed yes. to because our viewers have to name those songs. That's definitely correct. And name them in order. One, two, and yes. three. Yes, two and three. Yes, absolutely. That I love that. How good are you? I can't, like, I would love to see you do like a whole song and like, you know, well, maybe in one of the other episodes. Yeah, well, of course. I mean, as we go along and you know, we'll just play a little bit more and, you know, make it very yeah. interesting for our many viewers. Absolutely. And we're hoping that we'll get a guest on for our next show for our wonderful viewers. Of course, we certainly will. And yep. to our viewers, you stay tuned because we're not going to tell you who the guest will be, but there are lots of surprises in store for you. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you guys next week from Kirtley and myself. Peace out.